Hello, welcome and a very nice evening and today we are doing a very quick and short video about a problem that I noticed on several VJ cards. What you're seeing here is my Tseng ET4000 card and we will have a look uh, at the desk in a short while but here it is. And it's a regular VGA card for 286 to 486 s let's say. And uh, yeah, it's pretty nice, it's pretty fast, but it has one disadvantage. Whenever like games or demos or whatever do a fade in or fade out effect, you can see snow on the screen at the top of the screen. And not all VGA cards have this. Uh, some of my Trident 9000 ones, which are arguably worse cards, don't have this. And we will have a look at the different chips around here and we will have a look what exact chip is causing this problem because I have ET4000 cards that don't have this problem. And uh, yeah, so let's take a look at the desk and see if we can fix this. Okay, so here is our lovely card. The ET4000 VGA card is actually pretty well known and pretty sought after, but also pretty common, because they are one of the fastest VGA cards that you can get for MS-DOS with uh, ISA slots. For VESA Local Bus or PCI there are faster chipsets, but if you have a 16-bit ISA machine, then these are some of the best cards that you can actually get for a reasonable price. And they have a very high grade of compatibility with CGA, EGA and standard VGA stuff. Plus they do a couple of Super VGA modes. So yeah, they're, they're pretty neat cards. This particular one here, I'm not sure which brand it is, but you can find these pretty, pretty often. They come with the Tseng ET4000 AX chip which is basically the core, and VGA cards back then were still pretty dumb frame buffers. They didn't have any acceleration functions, be it 2D or 3D. They just had basic compatibility, compatibili <laughs> compatibility with uh, yeah, the, the previous standards that came out, mainly from IBM. And we have on the side here eight RAM chips, which are uh, one megabyte actually, which gives you, I think, 1024 by 768 in 256 colors, which lets you run a pretty nice uh, Windows installation, Windows 3.0 or 3.1 that is. Uh, we can probably also run Windows 95 with this, but it's uh, definitely better to have some accelerated card for that. Then we have a bunch of glue chips. Logic chips, I think this here might be some kind of gal or pal, I don't know. There's one quartz on here, and then we have two EEPROMs, or ROMs, actually, I'm not sure if they're erasable, but this is the VGA BIOS. Um, yeah, this is basically the, the firmware of the card. And then we have one chip here, and I'll turn this around. Uh, the ADV476KN66E. This is the chip that is actually making the problems on our card. Because this here is the so-called RAM DAC. And uh, every VGA card back in the day, every VGA card that has the 15-pin uh, analog output, has one of these chips, either as a discrete chip, like this one, or integrated into the VGA core, like some of the Trident cards. And th what this chip actually does is, it takes the frame buffer data that is stored here, and it gets told from the Tseng chip which address to read from here, and to generate the display signal, basically, the analog color, and that's why it's called the RAM DAC. It's a digital to analog converter. It takes the digital to data from the RAM and transforms it into the analog signal that comes out of here. And whenever we tell the VGA card to change the palette, for example, when we're doing a fade out or fade in, and we did that in one of the Let's Code MS-DOS videos, and I'll link to that up here when programming the VGA card, um, 
this thing will actually get programmed because this has the color lookup table. The Zeng chip simply gives this uh, chip here the data which palette the user wants. And if you change all of the 256 colors that the BGA card can handle, it will actually stop um, producing an image from the RAM. And this will be seen as a noise. And I will give you a few examples here in between uh, so you can see what it actually looks like, this noise. And maybe you have this problem on your cards as well. But as I said, not all cards have that problem. So yeah, this is not really bad. It was always there, basically. And it has to do with uh, how these RAM decks work. I can't go into any details. There are people who are better uh, equipped to explain that. But from what I gathered is that basically, uh, as long as we are writing to the color table in here, the RAM deck can't read from that color table and produces noise, basically. Yeah, so what can we do? Um, we can see that this uh, RAM deck, which is a uh, 66 megahertz RAM deck, the higher the, the megahertz here is, the higher the resolutions and the refresh frequency that the card can generate, it's actually socketed. So we can actually replace this with something different. And I'm not sure that I have something that is better, but I definitely have something that is different. And that's this chip here. Let's see if we can focus this. It's an Inmos uh, IMSG176P80. This is actually, I think, an 80 megahertz uh, RAM deck, which shouldn't hopefully hurt. Uh, and it has hopefully also the same pinout. And we will see if we can replace the RAM deck that is in here with this one here. Okay. I got this uh, as new old stock from some seller on eBay who has tons of these. And I thought, well, it might be a nice experiment to swap this out. Uh, Inmos were yeah, producing these RAM decks quite a lot. IBM used one of the Inmos RAM decks in their original VGA car design, actually. So I think this could be a pretty decent RAM deck, but there's only way to find out, and that is by replacing this RAM deck here with this one. So. Let's pull the chip out and put the car back in and see if it just blows up or if it works. There we have it. Uh, I used one of these tools here to lift up the sides on either side of the RAM deck. Uh, they came with my very, very, very cheap first soldering iron and they are pretty useful for that. Because I think they are actually used for pulling components while soldering. So yeah, um, I put the old RAM deck back in this anti-static casing, and I will put it to the side. And with a little bit of luck, we won't need it anymore. But maybe we will destroy the card, or I don't know what happens. Um, just let's find out. It turns out the card did not blow up, and the machine boots. Next up, we will run one of my programs that I did in the Let's Code VGA, namely one where we introduced the fade out effect, which writes all the colors onto the RAM deck, actually, updating it every frame. And you can see here, I will pause the video for one second, that the noise is very visible at the top. This is with the old ADV RAM deck. And uh, next up, we will try the replaced version, the Inmos RAM deck. Here it is. And let's fade out and stop here. And as you can see, there is slight noise. There are a few stray pixels, but it's much better, much, much better than before. Next up is a demo called Legend by Impact Studios. And you can already see here by the fade in and fade out effects on the left, the old RAM deck produces quite a bunch of noise and the noise is basically gone with the new Inmos RAM deck. This is better than I actually had hoped for. 
and you can see the output quality doesn't suffer. The RAM deck seems to be of very high quality. I mean, having a RAM deck is basically something that you only have on old VGA cards. All the modern PCs use HDMI or DisplayPort, which is completely digital because the displays are digital, but back then everything was CRT, analog driven stuff. Here's also Sierra's Xmas greeting card and the noise here is very visible as well, but I'm happy to say the Inmos RAM lag masters this as well. So that's the result as you have seen. The RAM deck replacement was actually a pretty, pretty good success. I didn't think that it would help that much, but it looks to be much better now, the problem with the noise. And yeah, it's probably not worth for everyone to replace the RAM deck. And with some cards, it's harder because the RAM deck is not socketed or it's integrated into the chipset. Then you can't replace it. And uh, there are cards out there that don't have this problem at all because they already have a good RAM deck. So it depends on your card, but it can definitely improve on some of the VGA cards out there, like my ET4000, which I very much like because it's incredibly fast, concerning uh, that it's a ISA card, actually. So I think I'm very happy with this. It cost me only a few euros to upgrade the card and it makes it much better. But that's it for today. I hope you liked it. Please leave a thumbs up or a thumbs down, depending if you like the video or not. Definitely leave a comment and I hope to see you soon. And I would also be glad if you could support me. You can do that via Patreon, for example. And there are some other links in the video description. If you can't do that, that's just fine. Uh, just continue watching uh, my videos and yeah, leave a comment on what to do next on this channel. And I hope to catch you on the next video.